Here I am with Kamala, by the way, who I agreed to debate because I love to debate and I'm a very good debater. I love to debate. That's debatable. Okay, very debatable. What are your thoughts on immigration? Well, we're going to be doing a lot about the immigration, okay, because there are people over there and there are people over here, okay? And we want, we want, okay? Slow down, little Kamala. Slow down. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> Don't urge you. There's people they want to come into the country and there's some people they want to leave the country and I think if they want to leave they should leave and if they want to come in we should put them in jail. That is actually so inappropriate and that is exactly what I'm talking about. They're coming from okay. outer space and Oaxaca. Okay, I'm speaking. All right. I'm speaking. Welcome everybody to the daily recap show where we talk about stocks and the financial markets. My name is Chase. Guys, if you like this video, please subscribe, hit that notification bell as well as the like button and leave a comment for the algorithm. Let's get into it. This is the daily heat map of the S&P 500 and stocks traded very bullishly today. I mean, a lot of green in a lot of sectors. Look at stuff like financials, industrials, energy, very, very green. What weighed on the market today though was some tech names. Look at stuff like Tesla, Amazon, Nvidia, AVGO here in semiconductors as well as Apple. And while there wasn't much news here in terms of semiconductors, they were just giving some gains back last week, especially when you're up 10 to 15% in a single week, you're going to have a bit of profit taking. Intel was up 6%, the best performing stock in the S&P 500 on the back of a $3.5 billion military deal to make chips for the US government. Apple was down 2% on weaker than expected iPhone 16 pre-orders and that overall weighed on the market. Other than that, it was actually a very bullish day in infrastructure excluding Microsoft as well as software. Very solid day here in software and actually just the broader market guys it was a very bullish day under the hood financials energy communication services were all up one percent you look at some of these rate sensitive names and defensive names like real estate and staples down they only gained 0.3 percent they were the laggards today and that's what you really like to see cyclical sensitive stocks at the top we had some of these tech names give some back after last week's gains and then these defensive sectors at the bottom of the heap and this was just the market positioning itself into wednesday Day's FOMC, we can see that the market in prior probabilities of a half a point rate cut is sitting above the 50 mark, probably close to like the 60, 65% right here of a 50 basis point cut and then a quarter point cut at about a 35 to 40% chance. This is in stark contrast to Friday where the odds were 50 50. So the market getting a little bit more bullish ahead of this Fed meeting. I still think that they're going to do a 25 basis point cut on Wednesday. I think 50 is signaling that the something wrong under the hood 25 basis point is the way to go and then from there we can determine the path of the next cuts we also get the dot plot and the dot plot is going to give us an indication as to what the speed of rate cuts will look like this year are they going to do 75 cuts in other words 25 over the next three meetings or 100 you know maybe a 25 50 25 it all really depends we'll see what the dot plot provides to us but in light of the market now pricing in a greater than 50 percent probability of a 50 50 basis point cut small and mid caps actually perform the best small size and mid caps actually perform the best in the value and core segments they really did outperform today large growth was the only red factor in today's trading session everything else was green and we actually saw the larger names underperform the smaller and mid cap names as well as growth underperform core and value nonetheless a bullish day across the board and every single index was green apart from the nasdaq 100 apple nvidia and semis weighed on this index the s p 500 was marginally higher a 0.13 percent this is exactly what we said in the weekend video we're going to trade marginally higher to new all-time highs and then maybe we're going to sell the news on the rate cut the iwm up 0.36 percent today and the dow jones and rsp were the best performing equity indices but if we actually have a look at what actually happened or transpired here today we can see that a lot of the move was actually predicated on a gap up many of these indices just gapped up on the day and then just traded sideways it was very balanced trade after the gap up the same is true here for the s p 500 the iwm actually traded slightly lower the dow jones and rsp2 that
that means the market gap up saw fair value and then just traded into the close however stocks weren't the best performing asset class today tlt bonds was up 0.89 percent and bond yields just eased ahead of the fed decision we saw them gap up a tiny bit pull back and then really make some gains here after 10 30 as the market is positioning for fomc i think bonds are a great risk to reward play right now because you can collect some yield and they tend to do very very well 12 months after the first fed rate cut and looking at the charts gold and silver barely budged today up 0.22.13 percent respectively you can see the yields fell across the curve bonds gained the dollar down half a percentage point it's a very rough move here in the dollar and that partly did support the overall momentum in stocks as well as small caps the best performing index guys the rsp right there up 0.73 percent we saw value outperform growth by a wide margin and the market's looking flat here in the after hours although slightly down except in the rsp which is showing our performance and i think this is going to continue but looking at the s p 500 a couple of things the advanced decline line at all-time highs continues to chug higher in fact market breadth was very very strong today we had 381 winners against 122 losers and this still is in a negative divergence meaning that we should actually go ahead and hit these all-time highs in the s p 500 which is pretty much at the 5675 which is our core resistance zone the put support uh, stay where it is at 5450 and the gamma flip is now at 5570 so you know the gamma flip inched up about 20 points higher from the close last friday and if we do see a pullback here we should find support in this area and then propel us to new all-time highs it does get a bit grim if we go below the 5570 zone but things are looking rather constructive especially when you look at this overall the technical picture right now we put in a higher low right here relative to this low which is largely constructive what we need to do now is just go ahead and break these highs right here the actual high right there um is 56.49 so you know we're about 20 points away we just have to go ahead break this high potentially get a close just to confirm these lows if we don't do that then things look really really shaky on the s p 500 but hopefully we go ahead uh, tomorrow and break these highs right Right here and then that would actually confirm this low and then we can start look to the all-time highs regardless of what happens we trade the plan and above the gamma flip when positive gamma we lean bullish buy dip sell rips to the put support and right now if you are not long in this market what you really want to actually do is probably wait for a pullback to this 5570 and then you can enter there for a move up to the 5675 however if we get a close below the 5570 you probably don't get long and you probably see what the price action looks like especially if we do get the sell the news event on wednesday then you can maybe lean short to the 5450 area however i'd probably take those shorts in maybe some of the larger cap names not so much the smaller cap names or the equal weight names just because they have actual relative strength like that's a very strong day for the rsp the iwm up 0.36 percent let's have a look at how the calf index did something i'm really bullish on half was actually up 1.04 percent today very 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 strong day when you look at that so i wouldn't get short in any of these smaller names if you are looking to take shorts maybe do it in the s p 500 cap weight or maybe the nasdaq 100 but we are going into a cutting cycle and i would really wait for like a solid close below the gamma flip before actually taking those shorts otherwise lean long and take advantage of dips that we do get in the seasonal week period to add exposure because i do think an end of year run is coming and we are going into a cutting cycle stocks do very very well in a cutting cycle where earnings are growing and earnings are growing at the moment but looking at the nasdaq 100 nothing has really changed 19,100 is still the gamma flip and you know i'd wait for a pullback here to enter long and go higher and below here i would actually look to shorts but if this is to continue to move lower yes we did put in a higher low relative to this but this is also also looking like a lower high and that is not constructive so very very weird price action right here what we really needed the nasdaq to do is go ahead and break this high now we could actually tomorrow just like rip up right and then continue higher that could definitely be the case but as it is right now in the year and 
now we are in positive gamma but this is looking like a lower high relative to this high right here and relative to this all-time high so you know if we do go ahead and look at this lower high then what the bulls need to do is hold this low right here so if we break this low that's a lower high in the context of making a lower low if things don't look that great but before we even get there the bears need to go and retake the gamma flip zone because we are in positive gamma and also look at this wick right bulls did come in in a very big way but still i'd be cautious going into rate cuts no one really knows what's going to happen because it really all depends if we get a 50 or 25 basis point cut the iwm up 0.36 percent today looking like a higher low largely constructive what the not the iwm needs to do now is just push above here break this high if it goes ahead pushes and breaks that high that's largely constructive then we can go ahead and look at the new 52 week highs but one step at a time and if we go to the rty index you can see we're in positive gamma as well it has not moved up uh, these lines automatically move up so it's still at 21 25 very interesting situation we just need this to go ahead push up break these highs right here and then this higher low will be confirmed by a higher high then we can go tackle the new 52 week highs things are looking largely constructive looking at the rsp is that another all-time high today yes an all-time closing high for the rsp this right here the 171 this was the area we were looking at to buy when the rsp did pull back it was a great place to buy however there was a lot of volatility below here so the 171 area is a very very key level because we used it as support we got a lot of volatility and we also used it as resistance at this point right here so if we do pull back guys this is a level you really really want to watch it's a very very key level but another new all-time closing high for the equal weight s p 500 this looks very very strong and i think we're going to go ahead and get 200 next year into the end of the year into 2025 the rsp can probably trade 200 and if we take a measured move as to like what is the actual gain on that you know you're looking at like a 13 percent gain over the next uh six to 12 months so great risk to reward right here and actually trading at that relatively fair value i think it still trades at like 16 times forward so you know very very good uh value when you look at that and then we look at the advanced decline line at all-time highs with this at all-time highs this looks really really strong and you really just want to add exposure to pullbacks don't take a short in the rsp it looks very very strong guys just buy the dip in this name this is goldman sachs sentiment indicator this indicator right here just shows the positioning across retail institutional and foreign investors versus the previous 12 months a reading above one means equity positioning is stretched it means you know trades are heavily crowded vice versa light positioning below this level right here and right now we're sitting at zero flat bang in the middle which means investors positioning is rather agnostic but given the trend we've seen right here to get to this level investors have actually lightening their equity positioning leading up to the zero mark right here telling us that institutional foreign and retail investors have been net sellers in recent weeks and that's why we are in the position right now and this can lead to outsized volatile moves in the market however volatility is simply opportunity and since 2010 had you bought 10 percent dips in the s p 500 12 months later you had immense outsized returns things do get hazy two years and five years into the future but buying on a 10 percent dip has netted you a 20 percent return 12 months later since 2010 on average and heading into a cutting cycle where there's no recession further compounds this fact equities typically rally following the first fed cut when we don't get a recession as you can see right here i don't believe we're going into a recession i think the economy is actually pretty strong certain components of it are weakening but that's the point of rate hikes to temper inflation economic growth is going to slow now we're going to unlock certain parts of the economy like the housing market and all of this cheaper capital is simply going to boost equity prices because businesses generally make make more money when co the cost of capital is cheaper and there's more liquidity in the system. Now with rate cuts on the table, where do we want to be positioned? The median returns during six months following the first Fed rate cut in the S&P 500 is actually 9%. And this figure right here just represents the excess returns on top of this 9%. You can see that utilities, com services, and energy tend to be the sectors that perform the best, returning 5%, 4%, and 4% respectively above the S&P 500 return, the worst performing sectors is actually infotech, materials, and discretionary with healthcare, industrial, staples, and financials. 
performing the best. But this is the median of all results right here. If we look at an economic cycle where there was no recession and the Fed did cut rates like 2019 right here, we can actually see that the S&P 500 returned 9% six months following the first rate cut. But while utilities did outperform and comm services performed in line with the S&P 500, we actually saw the energy sector fall 20% relative to the S&P 500. And what was the best performing sector? Information technology. Looking at another case in point 1998, in fact, it resembles the equity environment we are in right now with regards to growth and technology. And we have have a look at what performed the best or in excess of the S&P 500 and the S&P 500 at that point returned 27%. Utilities actually underperformed the S&P 500 and look at the three sectors that outperformed. Home services, all right, discretionary up 16% and information technology. These three sectors, infotech, discretionary and comm services are the mag seven sectors. So leading into a cutting cycle where growth remains robust and we go into a breakthrough in technology, we can actually see returns in highly cyclical and sensitive sectors being tech, comm services, and discretionary. And I think that's where you want to be positioned regardless of what this data is telling us. Nonetheless, data is data. And historically speaking, going into rate cuts, these three sectors right here have outperformed the S&P 500, utilities, comm services, and energy going into a cutting cycle where the median return of the S&P 500 is about 9%, 75% of the time higher. And we got this amazing note from Goldman Sachs, their US weekly kickstart, and we're gonna read it together. Equities and rates ahead of the first Fed rate cut, rebalancing our long and short duration stock baskets. Recent equity rotations reflect a downgrade in the market outlook for economic growth, but the prospect for the Fed has left the S&P 500 near all time highs. Our economists forecast the Fed will cut by 25 basis points for the first time next week and expect a 200 basis points worth of easing through the first quarter 2026 versus market pricing of 260 basis points. However, the trajectory of growth is a more important driver for stocks than the speed of rate cuts. The offsetting valuation impacts of higher bond yields and better growth expectations implies a limited scope for PE expansion with multiples flat. EPS growth will leave the S&P 500 modestly higher. Our year end 24, 2024 S&P 500 price target remains 5,600. Our role will six month and 12 month price targets are 5,700 and 6,000 in the S&P 500. So essentially they're forecasting over the next 12 months about a 10% return from where we are right now, a little bit less than 10%. And that's generally what happens when earnings are growing, margins expanding, the S&P 500 generally returns about nine to 10% on average. But let's actually have a look at Q2 fundamentals. Earnings season has pretty much wrapped up guys. 498 companies have reported in the S&P 500. We got a couple of companies this week, not too many. And things have actually been really, really good in my opinion. 13% growth here in the S&P 500 for earnings, 5.5% on the revenue front, 12.3% in margins, and 79.1% of companies reporting above analyst expectations, excluding the energy sector. These are the figures right here. Things looking rather robust because we beat analyst expectations by a wide margin, and the fundamental picture is still strong. And if we take what both of said previously, multiples remain flat and S&P 500 rallies on earnings. If we keep getting quarters like this, the S&P 500 is going to do very well over the next 12 months. But where does it actually leave us with valuation in the year and now? The S&P 500 currently trades at a 21.1 times forward PE and a 1.2x PEG, a 3.1% free cash flow yield and 3.2 times sales to EV with the most expensive sector. No surprise there, 28 times the least expensive being energy. And diving into the macro, looking at BOFA's GDP tracking estimate, very similar to the Fed's GDP now. They see third quarter GDP tracking at 2.3%, second quarter GDP tracking at 2.8%, down from the 3% mark. So we'll see what third quarter revisions look like. But 2.3% GDP when residential fixed investment is a 550 basis point drag on GDP is very, very strong. Anything that's 2 to 3% with real Fed funds this tight, rates this high, that's very, very good. And once fixed residential investment starts to open up because of lower rates, we should see that take over and drive excess real economic growth. And we could actually see figures greater than 3% in 2024. 
2025. And I think the market is actually undershooting what the growth prospects of the economy can be once the housing market is unlocked. Looking at credit spreads, super tame right now. Yes, we did see a tick up, but still very tight, very tame. The Fed doesn't know anything that we don't. Goldman forecasts credit spreads to continue to remain tight. And if there is uncertainty and worry in the economy, the credit market, the bond market, the yield market is simply not seeing it. And looking at some commentary from BOFA, I know this is a terrible image, but they expect the Fed to cut rates by 25 basis points next week after a long hold at the peak of 525 to 550. We think the Fed will em emphasize data dependence and reserve the right to change the pace of cuts at future meetings. Jerome Powell will likely acknowledge higher downside risk, but maintain a soft landing base case. And they say to read the data, not the tea leaves, so focus on the macro, not the micro. Investors will be focused on the dot plot. We expect the median 24 dot plot to show 75 basis points worth of cuts. That's 25 each FOMC up until December. 2025 to show another 125 basis points worth of cuts with a wide range of forecasts. But note that this is a low conviction Fed. The near term policy path will ultimately depend on the data, not forward guidance. Therefore, we don't expect to hear a lot about policy path the next week. We should fade any strong hawkish or dovish interpretation of the outcome of the meeting. And looking at earnings this week, not much at all, guys. We just have Lenar and FedEx right here. They're the major players reporting on Thursday. That's about it. General Mills on Tuesday. There wasn't much of anything here today. And then looking at data tomorrow, we have retail sales, industrial production, and then business inventory, as well as the home builder confidence index. But the big thing is going to be retail sales. Now, the consensus forecast for retail sales is to come in at 0.2%, ex-auto 0.3%, ex-autos and gas 0.5%, and core control to come in at 0.3%. But both are a bit more hawkish on the data. They see retail sales coming at negative 0.3%, ex-autos negative 0.1%, X auto and gas 0% flat and then core control negative 0.1%. And there's a reason why they have a bit more of a hawkish stance. And both came out and said that in their view, this reflects normalization of what was a pretty strong retail sales in the prior month with the total services spending momentum remaining strong. The reason why both see a little bit softer data here is just simply normalization from what was a strong retail sales report for the month of July. Slow down, little Kamala. Slow down. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> uh.